Hey there, in this tutorial, you're going to learn how to actually use compressor correctly for your vocals, okay? So now, what is a compressor? A compressor is a dynamic plugin. I'll explain what dynamic plugin means, but it's a dynamic plugin that just helps make your vocals sound more balanced in a mix. Now, what does that even mean? It simply means the parts that are very loud in your vocals, for example, if you see this peak right here, and the parts that are very low in your vocal, for example, this region right here, it tries to make it you know, sound as even and as consistent as possible so that when people listen to your songs, when the loud parts does not throw them off balance, okay? So that's why we need a compressor. So how does a compressor actually work? So let me open up the FL Studio Stock Compressor. So for a compressor to work, you need, you know, some features. Main compressors can, be, can look different, but let's look at the fundamentals of a compressor. First of all, you need a threshold, okay? Your threshold in your compressor is just simply the level that your vocal needs to cross for the compressor to become active. If it doesn't cross this number in loudness, it's not going to start working. It's going to be inactive, okay? And if it drops below that number at certain points of your vocals, the compressor will also become inactive. So you need to set the number at a point where, you know, no matter how loud or no matter how low it gets, it works on your vocal, all right? Then the ratio, also, the compressor won't work until your ratio is engaged. It's just simply how much compression do you want? The higher the ratio, the more intense the compression will be. So, for example, if you have a 2 ratio 1 um, compression, it's just, it's just going to be a slight compression, okay? It's not going to be very obvious. Like, it's not going to control the peaks and the, uh, and the dips, you know, um, very in a very obvious manner. But when you have a higher compression ratio, like um, four ratio one up to five ratio one, okay, which you can see for mostly vocals in pop music, it's going to be very aggressive. It's going to try to keep it as consistent as possible. Okay, so for vocals, we typically hang around three ratio one to four, or maybe sometimes five ratio one. Okay, again, the lower the ratio, the less um, control it will have, and also the lower the ratio the more dynamic, the higher the ratio, the less dynamic. Okay, dynamic is just simply the difference between the loud part and the quiet part. So if you have a low ratio, you have more dynamic parts. That is more parts of your vocal sound a bit louder than other parts. And if you have a higher ratio, you have less dynamic, which means you have parts of your vocals, both the loud parts and the quiet parts, trying to be um, at equal levels okay now it's never be on exactly on equal levels but you just try to bring them as close to each other as possible okay so next we also have gain now the gain button here is when you compress vocals sometimes it can get loud or really quiet so the gain or some we call it output or compensation or you know different they give you different names it's just simply you're trying to balance out that loudness you might have lost or trying to reduce that loudness you might have gained, okay? Now, we have attack and release. Now, attack in compressor is just simply how fast do you want the compressor to start working when the vocals cross the threshold, okay? So, do you want it to take a little bit of time before it starts working or do you want it to work, you know, immediately? Now, for most lead vocals, even in pop music, whether I do Afro beats, Afro pop, trap music, you know, even R&B, most times you want a relatively fast um, attack time. Now, this is not a rule, it's just a guide. You want a relatively fast attack time. I could have mine between where from 5 milliseconds to about 15 to 20 milliseconds. Okay, that's relatively fast. And sometimes you may want a slower attack time if you don't want the compressor to be working really fast as the vocals is coming in, okay? And then release is how soon do you want the compressor to stop working okay how soon do you want the compressor to stop working now i do not really um play with this usually i usually leave it about 200 to 500 milliseconds okay All right, so before going any further i want to let you know that you can actually get vocal tracks like this on our website sctutorials.com you can get vocal stems and the beat stems and you can learn mixing you know a lot faster you can even learn how to produce around vocals okay so that's why we make it available we have about um, four vocal sessions right now. We are going to add more as time goes. We're going to in include more, but maybe as affordable as possible so you can get your hands on well-recorded vocals so you can learn and practice a lot faster. All right, so let's get back to the lesson. All right, so what's the difference between a compressor like this and your typical stock compressor? Because most stock compressors across softwares kind of have you know similar buttons on them, threshold, ratio, the gain, attack, release. But if you notice, this compressor does not have a threshold it does not have a ratio it does not have an attack it does not have a release 
Now, that's because this compressor has some of those features built in and tied to this peak reduction button. So this is a much more simpler compressor to use, but at the same time, it's often misunderstood and, you know, poorly used by a lot of people. Now, a compressor like this has the ratio built in to this um, peak reduction knob. It has the ratio built in, the attack, the release, you know, the threshold, all of that built into this single button. And this compressor has a default ratio of about three ratio one, okay? Again, remember we talked we can how we can um, adjust the ratio from three ratio one up until like four to five ratio one for the vocals, right? So this vocal does not have a you cannot adjust the ratio, okay? The ratio is somewhere around three ratio one, so it's not going to create a lot of dynamic compression, okay? Still going to allow your vocal sound a bit more natural without you know squashing it so much, okay? But at the same time, that doesn't mean you can't abuse this compressor. Now, how do we use? either of them. Now it's very simple. So let me close this for a bit. So I'm going to play this vocal. Let me reset the knobs. So I'm going to play this vocal. Let's hear it sounds. Are your friends see the busy body? Let me set the ground up for me. But not like I owe you my love. You made me a fool in love. You can hear how from this part to this part, you can hear the dynamics, right? This part sounds relatively loud. Then this part right here became very, very loud, right? And then um, this part became very quiet. So this is what a compressor will try to control. So how do we know how to even set our threshold? Now, this is just a guide, okay? I do recommend at first carry your threshold to about minus 20. If you notice it's too much, you can um, relax it. Or if it's not enough, you can also adjust it. But usually minus 20 is a safe space to start. Okay, and then your ratio, let's, let's start it at around 3, ratio 1. Let's hear the difference now. I owe you my love. You made me a fool in love. When it's off. I owe you my love. You made me a fool. I owe my love. You made me a fool in love. My love. You made me a fool in love. You can hear the obvious difference between when the compressor is on, right? This. Yeah, you made me that part sounds really loud and the part that comes after it sounds very quiet but when the compressor is on it tries to bring them down to you know a more even position now what happens if i adjust the threshold bring it down to like let's say minus 30. my love you made me a fool my love let me increase the gain because the volume now is reduced my love you made me a fool in love you can hear it now it sounds more consistent my love you made me a fool in love. So at three ratio one at a minus 30 dB, it sounds good. So let's take it back to um, 20 dB and then increase the ratio to at around 4.5 ratio one. And let's hear the difference. My love, you made me a love. You made me a fool in love. My love. You made me a fool in love. This is three ratio one. My love. You made me a fool in love. My love. You made me a fool in love. So if you notice at three ratio one, the part that comes after, right? It doesn't come up as much. Okay? It doesn't come up after this peak. It sounds a little bit low. Okay? But at four ratio one. At around 4.5 ratio 1, you can hear that part, it comes up with this vocal right here with the peak. My love, you made me a fool in love. But overall, it sounds better when I think it's about around minus 30. See, it sounds super consistent, right? It doesn't even have that, you know, dynamic anymore. You can hear more dynamics at 3, okay? So that's why I said the ratio controls the dynamics, okay? While well, threshold is very important, yes, but... The ratio also controls the dynamic. You hear more variance between the peak and the part that comes after. So, and this is why it's important to understand the relationship between threshold and ratio. Okay. So again, this there's no rule to tell you, you know, this number should set it in at this point because you may want that dynamic expression. Okay. In some cases, you may want it to just sound really super processed. That is totally up to you. Okay. From money, by oh, oh, my love. You made me a fool in love. You want me to go polo. Oh, oh, oh. I want no more part of this. I just want my son to. Oh. So, if
if it's the breath, you know, there's no issue there. We can always take out the breath. That breath is not a problem. But notice how the vocal is handy consistent. When I turn off the compressor. From an e Yeah, the vocal just fell into the beat and some parts became too loud and some parts became too quiet again that inconsistency again is what the compressor solves so let's turn this off and bring in the second compressor and let's hear what the second compressor does right now for um this second compressor this is an opto compressor it's quite fast okay so it's easy for you to get that pumping feel if you're not careful as well unless you want that vibe and also we are going to try to gauge at around 3 to 5 dB of gain reduction, okay? Because we don't want to overdo it. I'm going to turn this on. And then this is just all we need to adjust to get that um, gain reduction going. Then we can use the gain right here to uh, adjust if it wants to be louder or not as loud, okay? So let's play and see. From money. Make sure you turn off your first compression just so we'll do a comparison. From money, but oh, my love. You made me a fool. I'm going to increase it. From my knee, but oh, so my love. You made me a fool in love. You want me to go polo. Oh, whoa, oh, oh. whoa. I want no more part of this. I just want. Around 3 dB to 5 dB of gain reduction, though sometimes it jumps to 7, right? But around 3 to 5 dB is more consistent of gain reduction. It still has that dynamic expression right, that I mentioned about. That is because it has a ratio of 3 ratio 1, right? You really can't control that. From, from my knee, but oh, so my love, you made me a fool in love. So it still has that dynamic character, but when it's turned off, from my knee, but oh, so this compressor does pull the vocal out but make it sound more crisp sound you know has a little bit more texture to it that's because this is an analog model compressor they typically add some character to the to your vocals to your mixes to make it sound you know a little bit different and in a good way most times okay so that's why i made it sound a little bit brighter and you know have a little bit more energy to it from money, from money. and it's not just loud it's not just loud even if i to reduce the loudness and I turn it on. Like if you hear this Y or this part right here. So it could easily control parts like this because again, this part wasn't very dynamic and through ratio one can easily solve that problem. But for parts that have you know high dynamic range like this. You will need something with a flexible dynamic, um, with a flexible ratio. So that's why you typically see in mixing um, videos or in sessions where they combine this compressor with another compressor because one of them will have better control over the dynamic range. So I could turn this on and we hear both to see. Then I could increase the gain. You made me a fool in love from my knee, but oh, so my love. You made me. If I turn this off, from my knee, but oh, so my love. You made me a fool in love. If I turn just this on, from my knee, but oh, so my love. You made me a fool. It does have control, but even if I make it loud, it's not going to have that presence that this compressor adds. So this compressor adds presence and warmth to the vocal and makes it you know, a little bit crispier. So even if I to increase it, for example. From my knee, by oh, so my love. You made me a fool in love. It just doesn't have that presence. It just sounds louder. But if I turn this on. From my knee, by oh, so my love. You made me a fool in love. So you can hear how this compressor, right, in addition to this guy, makes it sound 
even more interesting. When you use compressor like this, it's called serial process. You're using them in series, okay? Now, there are other techniques. You can use compression. You can use it in parallel to, you know, make it even more thicker and heavier. But most times for your mixing sessions, serial compression should work, should be good enough. It's just basically using two different compressors with, um, that has different characteristics so that you can co have better control over the whole process, okay? So once you understand how to use this guy, this can get you a decent mix, you know, an okay mix, but using a third-party compressor like the Wave CL, a 2A, can even make your mix, you know, stand out a little bit more, okay? Make it sound more present, make it sound fuller, more, more professional. It gives you that professional edge, okay, when you're, you're, you're mixing. So it's important that you know what you're trying to achieve. I'm trying to make your vocals you know you're trying to make it sound really punchy and hard or you're trying to make it sound more natural and dynamic okay so when you know what you're trying to achieve it's easier for you to control the compressor now there's nothing wrong with having a little bit more dynamics in your vocal and there's nothing wrong with you know having your vocals squashed it all depends on the vibe you're trying to make because a lot of vocal track a lot of hip-hop tracks for example you can hear the dynamics really squashed a lot of pop tracks as well you can hear the dynamics really squashed but when it comes to like ballads you know acoustic performances they try to allow the um the dynamics go roam a little bit so they may not use a high ratio the music you know is a softer ratio so that the, the vocal sounds more dynamic sounds more realistic and more you know authentic so again it all depends on the vibe you're trying to create for your mix okay so if you found this helpful hit the like button and subscribe for more tutorials tips and tricks all right so before going any further i want to let you know that you can actually get vocal tracks like this on our website sctutorials.com you can get vocal stems and the beat stems and you can learn mixing you know a lot faster you can even learn how to produce around vocals okay so that's why we make it available we have about um, four vocal sessions right now. We are going to add more as time goes. We're going to in include more, but maybe as affordable as possible so you can get your hands on well-recorded vocals so you can learn and practice a lot faster. All right, so let's get back to the lesson.